Okay, grade eight, this is your uh, nine for from HE Double Hockey 6. It's your nine questions, reach back questions. They're fairly, not really difficult, but a little bit time consuming, a little bit of structure to them, not fairly easy. So the first question is actually a, a percentage question. It says the final price of a $24,600 car after a 20% discount and then tax, 15%. So really, if we think about this car price as being 24, this, this square representing $24,600, that's the price of it. If we have a 20% discount, and we'll call this 20% here, that's going to be a discount. Really, we are going to pay for 80% of the car. So if you have a 20% discount, you pay 80%. So if I take the cost of the car, which is, uh, if I find that 80% or 0 decimal 8, 0 or 0 decimal 8, 80% of, we know, is multiplication. $24,600. The cost of the car after that discount will be $19,680. Now that's going one step in a calculator. And what you could have done is you could have actually found what is 20%, so I clear, what is 20% of $24,600? And you would have found that it's $4,920. You could have then subtracted that from the cost and you still would have gotten or got $19,680. So after the discount, that's what it is. And then it says you have to find out 15% HST. So again, if I think of this rectangle as being $19,680, when you put on the tax there, so this is 100% of the cost plus 15%, which is your tax. When we think about that as one number, that's going to be 1.15. So 100% is 1. 15% is 1.5, or 0.15. So if we take our calculator here, and I take the $19,680 car, and I multiply it by 1.15, I get my final price for the car, which is $22,632. Now, I could have done it a different way. I could have said, well, what is 15% of 19680? and got that number and then added it to 19680 and I'd still get the same answer 22,632 which is the answer to the question that's how much you're going to pay for the car the second question gives us a circle with uh, what appears to be a um, isosceles right triangle what I mean by isosceles right triangle is two of the sides are the same and it's 90 degrees okay so if I redraw that triangle here and I reorientate it so the 90 degree angle is where I usually see it, and I put 10 meters here, really what I know is in this particular triangle, the hypotenuse has a value of 10 meters. So if I put a square on top of this hypotenuse, I would know that the square attached to the hypotenuse would be 100 meters squared. Now keep in mind what Pythagoras said. He said the area of the two squares attached to the legs of a right triangle, those two areas added together equal the area of the square attached to the hypotenuse. So because they are the same distance, those little ticks mean the same distance, each of these must have areas identical to each other. In this case, it has to be half of that 100, which means they're 50 meters squared each. And if we look at the square root of 49, the 7 squared of 50 would be just a little bit bigger. If I take my calculator, it's probably 7 point something. So take 50 and put the square root. It's 7.1. Okay. So what that means is this is 7.1 and this is 7.1. All right. So I'm going to redraw that triangle again. I'm going to put 7.1 here, 7.1 there, and, and that. So if we think of this red circle, we'll come to that in a second. Whatever the area of that is, this area of this triangle has been taken out of it. Right. So I got to use my formula for a triangle, which is base times height divided by 2 or 7.1 times 7.1 divided by 2. But we know that's actually, uh, since we already did the square root of that, 7.1 times 7.1, uh, or base times height, is actually going to be 50 divided by 2, which is going to give the area. So the area of this triangle is going to be 25 square meters, right? Uh, and then the area of the circle, if I think of this diameter as being 10 meters, the radius being half that 5 meters, pi r squared would be our formula for the area of that circle, or 3.14 multiplied by the radius squared, or 3.14 multiplied by 25, or roughly, if I'm just doing estimation, roughly 
75 square meters. It's probably closer to 78.5. So the whole red circle would be 75 square meters approximately. The area of the triangle is approximately 25 square meters. Therefore, we could say the area of the red that remains is 50 square meters. Question three is three parts of three algebraic equations, basic ones. One that has distributive property. And remember, when you have distributive property, you could do one of two things. You could expand by multiplying both terms inside the brackets by that negative two. Uh, that's the way we're going to do it, because you could also do it. You could also do it with um, division first, but we're going to just multiply negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative five is a positive ten, not a negative ten. And that's what this equals here. So now I just have a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Get rid of that constant. Negative 2x equals negative 20. Divide both sides by negative 2. And x will equal a positive 10 for the first one. The second one, I'm going to get rid of my constant first, which is negative 5, by adding 10 to both sides. And the sum of these two is going to be a negative 5. And they're going to multiply both sides by negative 2. And I get x equals a positive 10 again. And in the last one, I'm going to add 5 to get rid of the constant first. Zero pair. I get 10x equals positive 4. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And x will equal 4 tenths. Or 2 fifths. Or 4 tenths. Depends on how you want to look at it. Your next question is your 3... Uh, fraction questions. So we really have four questions here. The first one we're going to do, uh, remember order of operations. So I have to do my multiplication first, which means I'm going to multiply my numerator. So 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 8 is 16. So I really have 3 quarters plus 5 sixteenths. Common denominator between a 4 and a 16 will be a 16. That's the lowest common multiple both 4 and 16 share. I have 12 sixteenths plus 5 sixteenths. Your answer is 17 sixteenths, which is a mixed fraction. It's 1 and 1 sixteenth. Second example, I still have to follow order of operations. So this 3 quarters plus whatever this is going to be. I'm actually going to bring this down a bit because there's an extra step in here. I'm going to think about any mixed fraction is improper. And I know when I do multi division, I like to do div uh, multiplication instead by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay. Now, some of you might remember that when you multiply fractions, if you want to reduce after you multiply this possible, if you want to reduce before you multiply, you can reduce cross-reduction. So 8 over 2 is going to be 4 over 1. Uh, and then when I multiply my numerators now, i got 3 times 4, which is 12, over 1 times 5, which is 5. So 1 and 1 half, or $1.50 divided into piles of just over 50 cents, you can get 12 fifths of a pile, or uh, 2 and 2 fifths of a pile. But I'm going to put down 12 fifths here as my answer. I then have the addition of these two, which requires a common denominator. 20. 15 twentieths is equivalent because you multiply this by 5 and this by 5. Uh, multiply this by 4 to get 20. Multiply this by 4 to get 48. When you add those together, you get 63 twentieths, which as a mixed fraction will be 3 and 3 twentieths. And your final question is uh, order of operations again. So I'm going to change this mixed fraction right away to uh, improper. It's going to be or improper seven quarters. Take away one half multiplied by the reciprocal of three. Now keep in mind that three is really three over one. So when I change the multiplication and use the reciprocal, the reciprocal of three is going to be one third. The multiplication of those two is going to be one sixth. Now, when you look for your common denominator, you could use uh, 24 if you wanted. But the lowest common multiple, 4 and 6 share, just to reiterate what that means is, so if I was to take the multiples here, go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and go 6, 12, 18, 24, the lowest common multiple they share is 12, which means it's the lowest common denominator I can use to create equivalent fractions. This one can be multiplied by 3 to get 12. This one would be 21 twelfths. This one would be multiplying both by 2 to get 2 twelfths. That's an equivalent fraction of 1 sixth. When you subtract them, you get 19 twelfths, which is 1 and 7 twelfths is your final answer. I like question uh, 5, is this? Is this question 5? I think it's question 5. Uh, you have two containers. One's a 
cylinder and one's a um, rectangular prism. The assumption being, what's going on here with these? There it goes. I have to delete those two, I guess. The assumption being is that they are containing the same liquid. So which is the better value? So the first thing I need you to do is find out what the volume is in that cylinder. So I'm going to use my formula for the volume of a cylinder. The uh, pi will treat as 3. The radius, if the diameter is 20, is 10. And the height is 12. That will be 300 times 12, which is 3,600 centimeters cubed. Or if it's a liquid, we can treat it as milliliters. That's the volume of the first one. The second one will be length times width, which is 25 times 10, multiplied by the height, which is 13. That's 215 times 13, which I've used my calculator. 250 times 13 is 3250 uh, centimeters cubed. Okay. So if we go up here and we say, okay, so the first one was $26.50 for 3600 centimeters cubed. How much is that for every 100 centimeters cubed or 100 milliliters or 100 grams or whatever we're looking at? We're just looking at space. Uh, in the second one, we can use proportional reasoning by saying it's $24 for 3250 centimeters cubed of whatever item it is, is proportionate to how much for 100 centimeters cubed. So essentially, what we're doing here is we're creating unit rates for both of them to analyze which one is cheapest per 100 centimeters cubed of space. Okay. So remember, we have two different, we have three different ways we can do it. We learned three different rates. The first one is you can divide by whatever number you need to to get 100. In this case, 3,600 divided by 36 is 100. So we'll use this method for the first one. So if I take my calculator and said, what is $26.50 divided by 36? And we find out that it's roughly 74 cents per 100 centimeters cubed or 100 milliliters or 100 grams or whatever it happens to be. In the second example, I would divide. Or, so the first one is to divide. The second method that we learned that works really well is to use this algebraic method. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply this way to figure out what uh, this is going to be. And it's going to be 3,250 times x equals $24 times 100. When you multiply by 100, you just move your decimal two places over. So it's going to become this. Isolate your variable by dividing both sides by the coefficient. And x will equal whatever 2,400 divided by 3,250 is. And that actually happens to be, uh-oh. Oh, I got almost the exact same price. So 0 0.738. I'm going to keep three decimal places here. And I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do that first one again. So 2,650 divided by 36 is 0 0.736. This is 0 0.738 cents per 100 centimeters cubed. This is... 0 is 736 or 736 so it's actually two one hundredths of a cent cheaper not very much but this is the cheaper one of the two but not even by it's two tenths of a cent cheaper per hundred centimeters cubed in the third question or the next question these are your integer questions so we'll just do them real quick the first question says negative four take away the product of negative two and negative three so Negative 4, take away the product of negative 2 and negative 3 is going to be a positive 6. When I subtract integers, I always find it easier to keep the first integer, change it to addition, and use uh, the opposite of the second integer. So we really have negative 4 plus negative 6, which is negative 10. In the second question, we have negative 10 times negative 2, take away the product of negative 3 and negative 4, or positive 4. So really, I just have these two multiplications I need to do. This is going to be 20 take away negative 12. Again, that same thing as we did before. Gives me a final answer of 32. And over here, 6 take away 10 is not 4 people. It's negative 4. And negative 4 take away the product of 4 and negative 2. We think there's negative 4 take away whatever 4 times negative 2 is, which is negative 8. When I do that, I get a final answer of 4. The next question gives you a present with various dimensions. It tells you that 100 centimeters squared of this expensive wrapping paper is going to, plus labor is going to cost you $8.40 to wrap. So the first thing I want to do is calculate what is the surface area of this prism. It's going to be very expensive, I think. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is figure out, well, there's two front and back rectangles, which is your F and B, front and back. And there are two 
rectangles which make up your left and right, and there are two rectangles which make up your top and bottom. Those rectangles that are the front and back are going to be two rectangles that are each 26 by 12, and the two rectangles that are the left and right are two 18 by 12s, and you have two rectangles that make up the top and bottom, which are 26 by 18s. And that's going to be the surface area of the entire package. So this is going to be 2 that is, let me just take the calculator here, 26 times 12. Those are two sides that are 312 centimeters squared each. And you have 2 that are 18 by 12. So 18 times 12 is, there are 2 that are 216 each. And you have 2 that are 26 times 18. So you have 2 that are 468 each. When I do that up, I'm going to have 624, I'm going to have 432, and I'm going to have 900, and oh, hang on, I can't do that in my head, 468 times 2, 936. Add those all together. You have a total surface area of 1,992 centimeters squared. Now remember, 100 centimeters squared costs you eight dollars and forty cents per end. This is going to be very expensive. So I'm going to write that as a unit. So it's eight dollars and forty cents for 100 centimeters squared. That will be proportional to I don't know the cost for 1,992 centimeters squared. Okay. I'm just going to use my algebraic method because I like it the best. So 100x is equal to the product of 840 in 1992. So multiply that by 8 decimal 4, 0. Oh, hang on. 8 decimal 4, 0. And I get 1673, 2 decimal 8. Divide that by 100 to isolate the variable. And the cost to wrap that present will be $167.33. Very expensive. The next question has a start and finish here in a park. Uh, to go around it the real way, you have to take that pathway right there. That would be the real lap. Or you could cheat by going to here, cutting across there, and going up here. Okay? So the question was, how much faster is it to cheat? All right? So the first thing is, if you didn't cheat, I'll just call it didn't cheat, you would go 1.2 plus 0 0.8 plus 1.2 plus 0 0.8. The distance around that park would be 2 plus 2 which is four kilometers examples, exactly. So if you didn't cheat, you would travel four kilometers. Now, if you did cheat, you'd be doing one 1.2, one 0 0.8, and whatever this distance here is. Now, since it's not written, there must be a way for us to figure it out, and of course there is. We must use Pythagoras to figure out that distance, that diagonal distance. So I'm going to draw my right triangle. I'm going to put 0 0.8 here. I'm going to put 1.2 here. And this time I'm going to actually solve it with the theorem itself, not with the drawing. So the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This one can be our a or this one can be our a, whatever ones we want, just as long as they're legs. So 0 0.8 squared plus the other leg, which is 1.2 squared, will equal, let's call it c squared or x squared, doesn't matter. So 0 0.8 squared is 0 0.64 plus 1.2 squared, which is 1.44. That will equal c squared. The sum of those two is 2 decimal 0, 8 equals c squared. So that distance across the park will be the square root. If I want to isolate, i got a square root this side. Square this roots this side to get c. So the square root of 2 decimal 0, 8, if I take my calculator, 2 decimal 0, 8, the square root of that is 1 decimal 4, 4. So that distance there is 1 decimal 4, 4. So therefore, if you cheated, you did uh, 1.2 plus 0 0.8 plus 1.44, which is 3.44. Remember, if you didn't cheat, you went 4 kilometers. If you did cheat, you went 3.44 kilometers. So therefore, therefore, you saved uh, 0 0.56 kilometers or 560 meters. That's how much that is if you cheated. And the last question is, given the side length as being a fraction, what is the volume? 
So really we know the formula for the volume is going to be this. So it's going to be 1, one and 5 eighths squared, I suppose, multiplied by 1 and 5 eighths. Now this is also the same thing as 1 and 5 eighths multiplied by 1 and 5 eighths multiplied by 1 and 5 eighths. So when we do it this way, it's probably easier that we don't use mixed fractions. So I'm going to use eight, uh, 13 eighths, which is the mixed version of each. I'm just going to multiply them all out. So when I do that, I take my calculator and go, uh oh, this looks like it's going to be a big number. 13 times 13 times 13 is 2197 over 8 times 8 times 8, which is 512. So then I say, well, how many 512? So 512 times 4, that's enough. So I get 4 as my whole number. Uh, and that's, so i got to write 2048. So if there's 2197, i got to take 2197, take away 2048. And that means that there's 149 left out of 512. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the really difficult answer to this question. What is the volume of this container? The answer is 4 and 149 512 meters cubed. Since your question was in fraction, you should keep it in your fra as a fraction in your answer.